Hi, this is Steve from Open Flight Solutions. And in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about the new version of the iOS uh, Flightbox Utility app, which will do, among other things, uh, allow you to update the firmware very easily on your Flightbox. So let's start by installing it. To do that, we're going to go to the App Store. And then from in the App Store, go over here and do a search for Flightbox. Oops, got to spell it right. Utility. It will find it there. And you can install it just by tapping the download and install button there. Then once it's downloaded, you can open it up. First thing you'll see it do is update, uh, download some, some firmware updates. Now, if you're on a uh, um, an iPad that does not have a cellular connection, you're going to need to make sure that you do this at home before you go out to the airport because uh, there's no way to download those uh, files if you are um, you know, on a Wi-Fi only unit and you're out in the field. So now that those files have been downloaded, we're ready. As you can see, we're now connected to my home network. Uh, we need to actually then connect up to the Flightbox network. So let's go back out and go to Settings. And we'll find under Wi-Fi, here's our flight box. Connect up to it. And as I say in every one of these videos, you'll see that no internet connection. That is perfectly normal. That is the way it's supposed to work since the flight box isn't actually connected to the internet. So go back out to the main screen. Go back to the flight box utility. And it'll take a second, but it'll then recognize that it's connected up to a flight box. And you'll see a number of things there. So you'll see that um, mostly we've got green lights, which is good. Um, we're connected to uh, the, the proper Wi-Fi network. The data connection is up and solid. Um, the system is getting both 1090 and UAT. Now, again, that normally won't happen if you're on the ground uh, away from an airport. I happen to have a UAT transmitter running here for testing, so that's why you're seeing that. Um, no UAT towers, because we're on the ground and I'm not able to uh, simulate UAT towers. Uh, this unit hasn't acquired a GPS lock, though that may come while we're sitting here. And um, you'll see that it has AHARS data enabled. Um, if you have the AHARS beta already installed, uh, that may be the case. And you'll see there, the next uh, line down shows that the firmware version is uh, AHARS 0.5.1, which is uh, now a slightly older beta build. It shows temperature, available storage, the uptime for this. And it gives you the option of installing either the current stable firmware or the latest beta firmware. Now, since this has um, the AHARS system in it and the current stable firmware doesn't yet support the, uh, the AHARS, we're going to install the latest beta firmware. In order to install the beta firmware, if you already have beta firmware, you simply need to tap the install latest beta firmware once. And that will pop up the prompt, click OK and it will do the installation. You see firmware updated and again it takes you know, a minute to two minutes to actually complete the installation. You'll see the system go through a couple of reboots um, and when it comes back up it will connect. Now you'll probably see the app disconnect here after a few seconds. In fact there it goes. It went back to my home Wi-Fi network. That's totally normal. Click OK and we'll wait for a couple of minutes Okay, a couple of minutes have gone by now, and the uh, system should be ready to reconnect to. You can see, or I can see the lights on the thing have come on, so I know it's working right. Let's go back to settings, go back to our flight box network, and then go back into the app. And again, it'll take a couple seconds to detect the change in the network status, but then it'll show like so. Uh, and this time you see there's only the option to replace the beta firmware with the current stable release. Um, because we have the latest beta installed on it. So all is good there. So here's the same process, and in this case we're going to update a system that uh, has had the, uh, the AHARS board installed but is still running the current uh, 1.0 R1 firmware. So I'm going to go to Settings, I'm going to go Connect to it. Okay, we go back, we launch the Flightbox utility. It takes a second and then it will figure out that it's connected up to a system running 1.0 R1, the current stable firmware. And in fact, if you were to go over to the report, it will say, you know, firmware, the unit is running the current version of the Flightbox firmware, no update is required. But if you want to install the latest beta, back over here to status, 
and at the bottom you see an option to install latest beta firmware. Tap on that and you've got to cap tap that several times because we don't want people accidentally doing it and then it'll say beta firmware install. To install it click OK, tap OK and it will do the update and within a few seconds the latest version of the uh, um, beta firmware will be installed on the system. Now a few other things to show. Um, this is of course just the basic status information um, that lets you know how well the system is doing what it's receiving. Um, we use this for diagnostics more often than not. But there's a couple of other things. Um, the report option you see down at the bottom, let's switch over to that, and that gives you a written report that kind of explains what all of those different uh, um, yellow and green and even red lights indicate. Um, some things that you need to worry about, some things that you don't. In this case, everything seems to be working just fine. It's on the latest uh, beta firmware. Um, it's not receiving anything from UAT towers, so there's a little note about that. It's getting 1090 ES data. It's got a 3D GPS lock, and it has AHARS. Now, if you have just installed the AHARS uh, sensors and you've never enabled them, um, there is one thing you'll need to do. So let's go over to the Settings tab you see at the bottom right. And in Settings, you'll see that there's a number of options here that may not have been there before if you have uh, an older version. Uh, one of them says Attitude Sensor, and the other one says Altitude Sensor. And you'll want to turn those on. Also, if you're going to, uh, to set the orientation to anything other than the default, which is you know, antennas towards the tail of your airplane and the opposite end of that towards the prop, uh, towards the nose, um, you're going to want to set the uh, AHARS sensor orientation. And there's another video that shows about that. Uh, now that we have these things configured and, and ready to roll, uh, I do want to show you one other thing. I, I guess this um, the uh, settings option actually gives you access to the entire web user interface without having to go through the web and put in 192.168.10.1 and all that. So we can look at a few other options. Let's tap on GPS slash AHARS. And here you see we've got GPS information and we also have uh, the AHARS sensor uh, display, the, the attitude indicator that's part of the web interface. And here I can move the box around a little bit and you can see it move in time with that. Um, you can also, of course, use this to check on uh, traffic. And we'll see a little bit down here. There's my test box up at the top and then a, a few other uh, no position values down below in the uh, basic mode S and no position info. Uh, weather, you won't really see much of anything on the ground, nor towers. Um, so that's it. And then if you wanted to look at the, uh, the, the default status menu, you can go back and take a peek at that as well. And that's all built into the app now by way of this um, settings option. The last thing I want to show you in this is the PFD function that we've added in. Primary flight display, which gives you uh, instrumentation. So if you're a ForeFlight user, since they haven't yet added support for Flightbox, uh, you can jump into this and it will give you more or less all of the same basic information. It doesn't have synthetic vision. That's something that I, I've looked at and it will, it's possible, but it would be a lot of work to add. Uh, but putting in a basic attitude, uh, speed, and altitude display with a G meter, which is over there on the left by the ground speed. You'll see that smaller box that's uh, right now pointing to one. That's showing you have a standard 1G. Um, and then on the right hand side you see the vertical speed indicator going um, up to 2,000 feet per minute up and 2,000 feet per minute down. Our attitude display shows pretty much exactly what you'd expect. Pitch and roll. Um, and there's a button here that sets level. So if you look over on the right hand column at the bottom under MSL uh, altitude you'll see that there's a Q&H value that's set 30.02 and that it's using the uh, flight box barometric altimeter. That's what the FB barrow means. Now, where is it getting that QNH value because we didn't set it? Well, that is actually coming from uh, a function that's built into this. If you're on the ground and you're connected to the internet, it's going to try to find the closest METAR for you and it'll automatically set that. If you are up in the air and uh, you're receiving ADSB information, it will use the data from the closest METAR that it receives over ADSB. So that automatically sets it. Now, if it can't get that, instead of saying MSL altitude, that will say pressure altitude, and you'll see that the QNH value is set to 29.92, and you'll get pressure altitude. So that's what you've got there. 
so there you have it. That's a pretty good overview of the new features available in the uh, Flightbox Utility app. Uh, probably worth mentioning that all of this is for informational and situational awareness purposes only, not designed as a primary source of attitude or navigation information, and we disclaim all liability for use as such. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thanks again.